Hey everyone, in this short video, I will show you how you can use SAS files in your web application. As you might already know, SAS files are not actually CSS but they need to be compiled into equivalent CSS code in order to be usable in the web pages. This video is about showing you how to do just that. In the code example which I am about to show you, you will learn how to use the Gulp JavaScript task runner to compile the SAS into CSS whenever we will build our application. This will streamline the task runner with the Visual Studio build process thus enabling us to compile new changes without performing an extra step. Before we continue, I would like to request you all that if at the end of this video or maybe somewhere in the middle, you think that you like this video then please stop for a while and subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button. It will be an immense boost in terms of encouragement for me to create more videos on a daily basis. Okay, so now let's see how the code is going to work. So I have created a new Visual Studio web application and the first thing which I am going to do is I am going to add a new JSON file to this project and let's call it package. JSON. Now this package.json will be used to download the Gulp dependencies which we will need to write the code for the task runner which will be used to um, compile the SAS input into a CSS output. Now over here the dependencies object has the properties for Gulp and Gulp SAS with their versions. Now the important thing to note here is the version of the Gulp which we are going to import. If you will import the latest Gulp version which is version 4 then you will need to write the um, task runner syntax in a different form and if you are not really aware of that I would advise to use version 3 instead of the latest version 4. This will not really make much difference for um, normal tasks which you are using but still you can take a look at the breaking changes in between the version 3 and version 4 if you want to use the latest version of Gulp. Now after saving this file. I simply need to right click on this package.json and click on the restore packages. This will, this will prompt the Visual Studio to install all the missing packages and we can check if they have been installed or not by going to the project folder and then going into, into this node modules folder. There is the folders for gulp and gulp sas which simply means that the gulp module has been successfully installed in our project. Now the next thing which I will do is I will add folders for the SCSS or actually let's name it SAS and the CSS files input and output. So the input files will be contained in this folder and the um, CSS output will be generated in this folder. And now let's add the actual code for the task runner for this I'm going to add a new JavaScript file and this is going to be named as gulp file.js and one more thing if you don't know how to use gulp then you can simply go to the uh, home page of gulp and then you can um, I don't know start reading the docs or you, there are actually plenty of um, resources available online to get started with um, uh, programming task runners in um, using the Gulp module. So I am going to add the code um, for the Gulp task runner. So we are importing the Gulp and uh, SAS modules and then we are creating two tasks. First one is the build CSS which contains the definition to take the .scss files as input and then pass it through the um, SAS compiler and then produce the CSS output and then there is a default task which will simply going to run the um, tasks which are defined in this array in this case it's the built CSS. Now we are not actually going to use the gulp module to run this gulp file.js we will use the visual studios task runner to do that. Now to do that you can simply um, right click on this gulp file.js and then click on the task runner explorer to open this um, task runner window and then um, you can see that the two tasks are listed over here. First one is the default and second one is the build CSS. We can run any of them. I would suggest to um, run the default one because if later you will add more tasks to, to this default task then you can simply run this default one instead of running them individually. Now 
right now this sas and css folders are empty so first we will need to add an, an input sas file and for that i will simply add a new style sheet and then i will name it style.scss which is the um, extension for a sas file then let's add some test style now this is the way in which we would uh, nest any styles now this is just uh, um, just for testing and we are not actually going to use it in any web page we, we just want to see if this um, sas code is going to be compiled into an equivalent equivalent css style now in this gulp file.js we are actually uh, picking up any .scss files or inside any directory structure as input and then we are going to compile them and then we will um, and then we need to add it into the uh, css folder as output so now let's run the task the default task to see if the task runner is running correctly or not and then when i'm clicking clicking on run then you can see that the um, default task has finished running and then we can check if the css file has been generated or not by going to the folder now you can see that there is a style.css and if you want to see it in the solution explorer then you can click on this show all files um, menu item and then you will be able to see the style.css file over here this simply means that the task runner is running correctly now this time we will always need to right click on this default task and then run it but um, this is not the you know correct way to do it it is simply adding an extra step and we can fix this problem by simply attaching the task owner to the visual studio build process and then for that we can add a binding to add a binding you can simply right click on, on any task which you need to uh, assign to any binding and then you can go to the bindings menu and then i'm going to add the after build binding so whenever the build will be finished then um, this task this default task will run so to test it i'm going to remove this style.css file from over here and then let's go to the solution let's clean it and then let's build everything again now to check if the css has been created or not yep it has been created and we can go to the solution explorer again to check the contents and they are, they are still same so yep that's the easiest way to compile a sas input into an equivalent css output and that's pretty much it about this video guys and i hope that you will like this video if you do then make sure to like the video and um, post a comment or any question or suggestion if you like to and i will make sure to reply to all of them and till we meet in the next video have a good day